Uh, this lesson is about real gas behavior. Uh, in uh, and around the turn of the century, Johannes van der Waals proposed the modification of the ideal gas equation to better predict the pressure of gases that do not follow the predictions of the ideal gas line, which is based on two approximations, which are not, strictly speaking, true. Those two approximations are that gases have an infinitesimal atomic volume, meaning that they actually occupy no volume. And the second assumption was that gases have no attraction for each other. These two assumptions were necessary to uh, do the statistical calculations to predict the pressure exerted by a gas as though the gas were a, um, a spherical solid bouncing around. That bounces around like a super ball that doesn't have, that doesn't lose any energy. So with those approximations, they were able to predict a ballpark pressure for what they call an ideal gas. And these two assumptions work best for gases that are at high temperatures and low pressures. Because if a gas is at low pressures, it has fewer collisions per second, therefore fewer interactions with other molecules, which it might have an actual attraction for. And at high temperatures, the gases are moving more rapidly, so each collision has more energy. So any of the um, any of these things that are going to cause a slight variation are going to be small relative to the kinetic energy of the gas that's moving quickly. Both of these assumptions allow for the development of the simple equation PV equals nRT. But real gases deviate from the predictions made by this equation. Um, so what we did here is rearrange PV equals nRT to isolate for pressure exerted by an ideal gas. And what Van der Waals did is he introduced two constants, A and B, to correct the ideal gas formula for these two errors. So he separated um, the added an extra term to the equation for pressure. And in addition to that, he put a new term in the denominator of this equation. This term is the correction for the actual volume of the atom. The actual atoms, although they are extremely small, they do have an actual volume. And that takes away from the volume that the gas has to uh, occupy when it's going through its, its um, excursions in the container. So this term tends to increase the pressure because by, by making the denominator smaller, you make this term bigger, so that increases the pressure. On the other hand, this term uh, tends to reduce the pressure. What, why does it cause a reduction of pressure? Because it's the correction for the attraction that gas molecules actually have between each other. When two gas molecules collide, um, the ideal gas equation makes the approximation that they have no interaction, that there's no attraction between the gas molecules. But in truth, gas molecules do have a slight attraction for each other when they collide, and that takes away from some of their kinetic energy. So this has the effect of reducing the actual pressure of the gas. So the volume of the container is decreased slightly by the tiny atoms, in the uh, and that's represented by the term NV, where N is the number of moles, and V is uh, the constant that is worked out using empirical calculations by, based on experimental evidence. Thus, the free volume of available gas molecules is V minus NB. V has units of liters per mole. And the units of A are liters squared atmosphere per mole squared. How do we apply these? Here's an example of a question uh, from Brown's textbook, number chapter 10, number 85. The question says, calculate the pressure exerted by carbon tetrachloride at 40 degrees Celsius if one mole occupies 28 liters. Assuming that A, uh, carbon tetrachloride, obeys the ideal gas behavior, and B, it obeys van der Waals. So uh, we need two values, the values of A and B. For carbon tetrachloride, they are 20.4 liters squared atmosphere per mole squared, and B is equal to 0.1383 liters per mole. So we first solved it using the ideal gas equation. We solved for P, we isolated P, we plugged in all the values, and we get a value of 0 0.918 atmospheres. After we correct for three significant figures. <clears throat> in B, what we've done is we used the Van der Waals equation. Again, we plugged in everything. Uh, notice the value of N of NB is, in, is for one mole and the gas occupies 0.1384 liters per mole. So that reduces the available volume of 28 liters by that amount, thereby increasing the value of this term. 
So this has the effect of increasing the pressure. This term has the effect of decreasing the pressure by a certain amount. When we find these two values, we get two numbers. We subtract one from the other, and we get the answer of 0.896 atmospheres. So we see that the Van der Waals equation predicts a slightly lower pressure for the gas than would the uh, ideal gas equation. 